for some reason people love floor presses and they suck. In today's video, we're gonna be breaking down Jake Gyllenhaal's crazy workout to get him in shape for the movie Roadhouse. My name is Devin Ricker. I am a certified strength and conditioning specialist. Let's see if Jake Gyllenhaal's workout is actually good and could help you get in similar shape to him. So let's dive in. First of all, let me just say, I've seen some other movies, I think they're like Southpaw, where Jake Gyllenhaal is in crazy good shape. So this guy has been in shape before, so this is nothing new to him. This guy knows how to get shredded for movies, but I'm curious to see if this specific workout from Men's Health is actually gonna help you get in that same shape, so. Hi, I'm Jason Walsh. I'm coming to you from my studio Rise Movement in Los Angeles, California. Jason Walsh, okay. Jake Gyllenhaal's trainer, cool. Seems like a nice guy. Let's see what he's got. What we're doing is real. Yeah, look at your stomach. Never been done before. It's real. I mess around. I would hope it's real. I mean, we've all seen movies where everything's like painted on, like the uh, the abs are painted on, the chest, like all these little lines and stuff. So it looks like he's clearly actually worked hard and achieved this physique, which is really cool. So Jake needed athleticism, resiliency, and overall strength. This would also feed the mind and mentality he would need to get up after a fall, a potential punch, or a kick. All right, cool. So his training is for strength and athleticism. So we should see a lot of athletic movements in here. We should see some power movements. We should see some strength movements. So powerlifting moves, weightlifting moves are going to be the best bet for that. Anything explosive is going to be really good. All right, we're diving into the workout. Generally, we spend a few minutes each session moving, trying to get the core body to mature up before moving into some sort of mobility, which you see here with the stick, which is a great tool to help increase range of motion. Okay, for some reason, Hollywood trainers always do a lot of mobility before they get into the actual exercises. Now, I don't know what he's about to do, but if it's any sort of strength training, this stuff is kind of unnecessary and kind of a waste of time. What you need to do for your warm up is actually just do the movement. So like for instance, if he's about to go into bench press to get the crazy chest that he has for this movie, then he would just need to do bench press movement. He doesn't need to do all this mobility work. Okay, so also this isn't really mobility work. This is static stretching which, you know, there's been some research to actually show that static stretching actually reduces your power before you're actually lifting. So if power or strength or anything like that, if you're wanting to lift heavy weight, static stretching beforehand is probably not the best idea. And especially if you're an athlete or doing anything in the realm of sport, I wouldn't recommend static stretching before you're actually about to perform that sport. This is an amazing piece of equipment used mostly by performance centers to help train athletes in every plane of motion and also to help increase power production. We use it primarily for priming the nervous system, proprioception, learning movement patterns, and a lot for warming up joints and metabolic training. Cool, so I've actually never used one of these before, but they look cool. I don't know if it's like, is there tension? If you've used one, let me know in the comments. Is there tension on the pulling and pushing side of the force, or is it just kind of like he's just going through the motion right there and it's something to kind of guide him through that? Either way, if he's about to weight lift, this isn't really, you don't really have to train the nervous system beforehand to get it ready. That's kind of another thing that a lot of celebrity trainers say. We have to work on the nervous system and get it prepped and everything. Not necessary. Really, this is just wasting a lot of time. We just need to really jump into the workout. All of these kind of movements can just be done in his martial arts training that I'm sure he's doing for this movie. He doesn't really have to do this to warm up for his strength training. You know what I just noticed is a lot of times these men's health videos actually don't have the actual actor in the video. They have someone doing the actor's workout. So it's cool that Jake Gyllenhaal's actually in this video doing these exercises. Isometrics are a staple here at Rise Movement. We use them all the time to help increase strength and stamina at different joint angles. If you wanna increase strength and stamina at different joint angles, then do a movement. Isometrics have been shown to be inferior to movement exercises. So instead of just holding yourself there for 30 seconds on and resting for 30 seconds, that's not gonna build any muscle unless like maybe you're a really frail old lady. That, that could work for that. But for someone that's already in good shape, like Jake Gyllenhaal, and you're wanting to build muscle or you're wanting to build strength, you have to do concentric and eccentric movements. So maybe this is still part of the warm up. I don't know. I'm not really sure if we've kind of jumped into it or not yet. See, this is another thing. It says that row holds build mid back strength and shoulder stability. Yeah, maybe again, if you're not strong already, but if you already have some foundation of strength, then this isn't gonna really build much at all. You're gonna wanna, like I said, work through a full range of motion or some partials or something like that. Just doing isometric work is okay. Like kind of like doing a plank is okay, but it's not really gonna build those muscles up. It's not gonna strengthen them as much as doing an actual movement. Getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. Stress, adapt, recover, on repeat for well over a year. 
that's a discipline. So people really love ice baths these days, which is totally fine. It's kind of cool. It builds up resilience and mental power and all that sort of stuff, but it's not really good if you want hypertrophy. So if you're trying to build muscle, Getting in an ice bath, especially right after your workout, actually blunts recovery. Having said that, ice baths can be really good for athletes, and they can be really good if you have a game one night and then a game the next night and you wanna recover in between. So they're really good for that, but they're not really good for adaptation. So if you're wanting to adapt, you're wanting your muscles to build on top of one another, you're wanting to grow your muscles or grow your strength and stuff, ice baths aren't really your best bet. But if you do like doing them, just don't do it right after your workout. Went into this movie full of obligation, honor, duty, to follow in Patrick's footsteps. It was incredible to watch. Incredible to see him morph into his character. Patrick Swayze, what a man. That guy was the goat. He was he was great. Yeah, so, and I've heard reviews about this movie actually. I saw uh, the Dak Shepard uh, podcast or listened to it. And uh, if you haven't listened to that one yet, go give it a shot because Jake Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor are pretty hilarious on there. They're completely different personalities, but they really wanted to, to pay homage and honor the original movie, especially Patrick Swayze. We always keep the heavy primitive work one way, shape, or form, whether it's squats or deadlifts. In the very okay, heavy primitive work. Okay, all right. I, I guess by primitive, he means like straight up strength training like everyone should be doing. Squats, deadlifts, variations thereof. Okay, cool. Safety bar squats. I do like this. The safety bar is the bar with the little handles that come all the way around here. It's really good uh, if you have bad shoulders or just don't have really good mobility in those shoulders. So staying right there is really good. Uh, if he's doing all this mobility work, I don't see why he's not just doing normal barbell squats. But you know what? Safety bars are just as good. So holding it right there might just be more comfortable, which is really cool. And three sets, uh, three to four sets of six to eight is pretty cool. That's uh, pretty decent for strength slash hypertrophy. So I like these sets. I like these reps right here. This is good. Hey, that's what I said. Safety bar squats blast your legs without challenging your shoulder mobility. Yep. So if you have a safety bar, give it a shot. It's a it's a pretty cool device. Looks like he's got a pretty decent range of motion. I'd like to see it from the side, but from the front looks pretty decent. No safety bar, do kettlebell front squats instead. Uh, you just can't really overload the muscles as much with kettlebells as you can with uh, barbell exercises. I would say if you don't have a safety bar and you have bad shoulder mobility, just don't do squats. You could you could also do Smith machine squats, uh, but I would probably prefer just leg press or something like that instead. Grip work is essential as it seems to be one of the limiting factors in the gym. Okay, so a forearm drill. I've actually never seen this device right here. It looks like it's set up on a cage. So that's actually a really cool device. I don't know if that's necessary to get the physique like he's got, like these abs right here, this chest right here. Nothing I've seen so far will get you those abs, chest, or like the lats that are popping out. So this forearm work is kind of cool. It's supplemental. Maybe it's really good if you're into jujitsu or some sort of martial art or something like that or anything that involves forearms. But overall for looks, forearms, not like a huge deal. So, I mean, you can, like you said, pepper them in a little bit, but I would definitely wouldn't have included that in this, this workout video. I haven't seen anything yet that's gonna convince me that you're gonna look like Jake Gyllenhaal and especially not these forearm drills. Forearm strength also correlates heavily with longevity. That's true. It's actually one of the best correlations that we have with longevity along with VO2 max but it's not forearm strength specifically. So if you're always working your forearms out, it doesn't mean you're gonna live longer. It's actually more of an integrator of all the work that you've actually been doing. So for instance, someone that deadlifts three or 400 may live a little bit longer than someone that can only deadlift 100. And the person that can deadlift that three to 400 pounds is naturally gonna have a stronger grip strength than the person that can only grip strength 100 pounds. But it's not the grip strength specifically, it's the overall strength of the body. So the stronger you are overall, that is what's linked to longevity. And the best way that we have to test that is through forearm and grip strength. Here we see some examples more relatable to MMA training, keeping the body in check with offset loading and movements more imperative to sport. So the offset training can be pretty decent for MMA training. I'm still not convinced Jake Gyllenhaal is gonna get ripped with just doing those kind of exercises. Like, we haven't seen anything to build his arms, shoulders, chest, anything like that yet. We've seen a lot of leg movements. And yeah, that can be pretty decent for MMA kind of stuff. This right here, bag jump overs can be a pretty decent drill for jujitsu, you know, passing guard and things like that. But other than that, it's not really good for building strength like it says right here. It could be decent for agility, but not really strength. Here we go, finally, we're gonna be working the chest out. Let's see what he does. Okay, 
So there's a couple of issues here. So first of all, I like this bar, the Swiss bar. I like having your hands twisted more like this instead of like that. Maybe if you have issues with your shoulders, which it seems like Jake Gyllenhaal might actually have issues with his shoulders because they're doing so many things to protect the shoulders. But right here, he's got a kind of more of a neutral grip, you would call it, or a hammer grip and he's pressing up and down. I like that, that's totally fine, that works well. You're gonna be hitting the triceps maybe a little bit more than the chest. What I don't like is the floor press. For some reason, people love floor presses and they suck. And it literally says it right here, by limiting the range of motion. That's not a good thing. If you really want to build your chest up, you have to have a really good range of motion. And if you're gonna do partials, which are totally fine, that's cool, you actually wanna stay at the bottom end of the partial. So you wanna stay where the muscle is the most stretched out. That's gonna create the most hypertrophy. If you're staying at this end of the range, it's not really gonna do much for you. So what I would rather see him do is be on a bench where he's gonna work on his stability a little bit more than being right here. And he's gonna go all the way down, touch his chest and all the way back up. And even better yet, let's just grab some dumbbells and do bench press that way. Two sets of 10 to 12 reps, totally fine set and rep range. All right, so up next we have a chain push up. So what that does is it it's kind of like using a band. It actually makes the lift harder as you go up towards the lockout. So this could be really good for power lifters really wanting to work on locking out their bench press, things like that. For for muscle strengthening and muscle growth, I'd rather see him get a full range of motion by doing something like a deficit push up. That's going to be a lot better, a lot more taxing on that chest than doing chains. And if you wanted to, you could add the chains onto doing a deficit push up. But just like a floor press, he's going to be limited with his range motion. If you have a deficit push up, you could have your hands up on a couple of blocks or plates or something like that, or you know, that perfect push up kind of thing that they used to sell those things and give you a really deep stretch. That's going to be a lot better than doing a normal push up with some chains on you, which is not a bad exercise, but I just think we could optimize it just a little bit more. Push ups are a great chest finisher. So if you're going to do them, I would do them towards the end of the workout. So start with your big heavy compound lifts, then go to your isolated exercises like flies, and then you can finish off with something like push-ups because usually you can do a lot more reps of push-ups than you can something like a, a heavy bench press or something like that but like i said try out the deficit push-ups two sets of 10 to 12 reps works totally fine lateral loading is very important to all sports especially to mma fight training so what he's basically doing is he's holding himself there in an isometric position while pushing almost punching out with the weight and then pulling himself up at the same time so so he's working his chest he's working his shoulder working his arm working his back he's kind of working it all out and he's doing it on one side it's kind of like two unilateral lifts kind of mixed into one it's kind of it looks it looks badass and everything what i would rather see though is give him some heavier weights put him on a stable bench press and have him do really heavy bench presses that's going to maximize his force maximize a lot of that power and then have him do some stable rowing as well have a chest support there or do a bent over row that way he can do way heavier weights and if you want to work unilaterally just do dumbbell rows or be stable and do a machine one arm chest press or a dumbbell one arm chest press you can still work your body unilaterally but you're going to have way better benefits if you're not worried about stability the more stable you are, the more force and power you can produce, and that's gonna translate to your sport or your physique a lot better. If you are working on power movements, three sets of six to eight reps is just maybe a little bit high on the reps. I'd rather see you do less reps and maybe more sets and be really explosive with each one. We keep things in balance with push-pull rips. Push-pull rips, this is another one of those exercises where he could get more benefit out of just doing one at a time. Oh, and he's lunging in between as well. No need to do that. Like That's not gonna carry over to your sport that well. But I gotta say, he does look pretty badass doing this. And look how ripped he is, man. Look at that chiseled jaw right there. They probably filmed this workout around the time that he was most ripped for the movie so that he would look really good for these shots. And he does, he looks really on point. The name of this workout is Jake Gyllenhaal's workout to get his ridiculous roadhouse body. The most important factor in all of this is gonna be consistency with training and with your mills. Followed by my favorite, some primitive climbing sprints. These things are crazy. Uh, they're really difficult to do. 20 seconds on, 30 seconds off, six to eight rounds. That would be killer. So if you're wanting a pretty good interval cardio routine, yeah, that, that works pretty well for that. But I wouldn't do it right after the workout if building strength or building muscle is your primary goal. This is Jake and I right before the UFC weigh-in in Las Vegas, um, taking a little bit of sugar, get a lot of reps in, push-ups, sit-ups, and voila, the muscles swell up and look full. Cool, so that's actually really cool. That's a bodybuilding technique. They take in a lot of sugar right before you're about to go on stage. So they did the same thing here as he was about to go out to film his scene. That's pretty cool, I like that. 
All right, cool. So that was a breakdown of Jake Gyllenhaal's workout. I thought it was pretty good overall. There's a lot of stuff that Hollywood trainers do that is just completely unnecessary. And I know because I used to be in Hollywood as a trainer, so I totally understand where they're coming from. But a lot of this stuff, isn't the best idea for most people to get in shape and to get this kind of physique. They do mention in there briefly that his nutrition was key, and I totally agree with that. To get a physique like his where it's just totally shredded, really low body fat, you have to have nutrition on point. It doesn't really matter what kind of workout you do. If your nutrition sucks, then you're not gonna be lean. Also, I would really like to see him do a lot more stability exercises and not worry so much about trying to be sports specific with MMA type moves in the gym. I would rather see him do that when he's actually training MMA to be like a martial artist. And then when it comes to weightlifting, I'd rather see him training for muscular hypertrophy, power or strength and being very stable, getting a full range of motion, getting a really deep stretch on those muscles. Overall, not a bad workout to get a physique like Jake Gyllenhaal's to really look like this for the average person, I'm probably gonna give this maybe a B, B minus, something like that. It's still a decent workout. I like the sets and reps. I like some of the movements and stuff, but you could definitely add in a few things to really optimize it. So overall, well done, Jake Gyllenhaal. Great job, you look great for the movie. And if you guys are still watching all the way to the end, thank you very much. Feel free to like this video and I'll catch you in the next one.